So I already posted a short on this, but I couldn't really go into full detail of saying all the things that I wanted to say about this situation in 60 seconds. So I figured I would do a short discussion video about it. For those of you who didn't watch the short, I did a video about a team roper that is currently at the NFR called Junior Naguera, and it's to do with how he chooses to celebrate after he throws a particularly good loop to get the cow's heels, because he's the healer in team roping. Now, as I'm sure people who rope can gather, I do not rope. I could not rope for shit. I would not be a good roper. I am in no way criticizing this rider's talent as a roper, how he does his job as a roper. I am simply drawing to question how he chooses to celebrate it when he does a good job at his job of being a team roper. I'm not saying I can do it better. I'm not saying that he's a bad athlete at what he does. I'm taking issue with his choice of celebration because it is harmful to the horse. I'll show some photos of what I mean and then I'll also show the videos, but essentially what he does after throwing a, his loop when he thinks that he's done a really good job and they're getting a fast time or whatever is he falls all the way back and leans all the way back in the saddle. Now, this behavior in itself could be harmless, but the reason why it's harmful is because of the fact that he holds onto the reins and is pulling on his horse's mouth in the process. And in all of the photos and videos, that I have been able to find of him doing it. In every single one, the horse's mouth is gaping wide open, indicating that they are uncomfortable and in pain. Their head goes up, their eye whites show, their mouth is gaping. In a lot of the photos, you can even see the fact that the tongue is starting to turn purple. And there's just a whole lot of pain signals in the horse indicating that they are in discomfort. And in addition to the action that his actual hands have on the reins in these situations, the horses are also wearing a rope noseband tie down. And then they also have the shanked curb bit. So it's not a snap. The reason why I bring up those things in particular has to do with the fact that the rope noseband is rolled so that it's more abrasive and it'll find more pressure points. So when the horse's head goes up, which is a natural response to the pain in the mouth, they're also getting their nose pulled down on with a thin rope that is applying a lot of pressure to the nasal bone. So it's a conflicting action. The curb bit and the pain in the mouth is causing the horse to bring their head up. And then the nature of the curb is also pulling down on the head stall of the bridle. And then on top of that, they also have a nose tie down that is pulling and pressing down on their nose. So it's not just what's occurring in the horse's mouth that's a problem for discomfort. It's the action of all of the equipment being used and the horse's response to the excess pressure on its mouth. And in the videos that you can see of the horses, how they react also indicates high levels of discomfort. The equine pain ethogram is... The equine pain scale is an industry leading standard of detecting pain in horses and it has been tested again and again and showed to be incredibly accurate. And if you look at the equine pain scale and compare it to the photos of his horses in these situations, they pretty clearly tick off a lot of boxes for the equine pain ethogram. And if you take it a step further and look at the recent Dr. Sue Dyson's ridden pain ethogram that has been released, they also check off a lot of the boxes for behaviors that are specific to ridden pain. So there's really no reason to be denying the fact that these horses are in pain. And this issue in itself, I think, exposes a much larger issue in the horse world that people are trying to ignore. That issue is the fact that there's a lot of people who are willing to defend behaviors that at most, if they change them, would be a minor inconvenience but are causing their animals a lot of pain. There are a ton of people defending this roper and his right to do this specific action as a form of celebration, despite the impact it has on the horse, because they just think he should be able to do it. They deny the fact that it causes pain, or some of the ones that admit it will say things like, oh, well, it's only like a few seconds. But the point is, it doesn't matter if it's a few seconds. Without those horses, he would not be able to have the wins that he does. And if when he has a really good ride, a really good run, he is doing something that feels punishing to the horse, his moments of celebration and his excitement is feeling punishing to the horse. It's effectively teaching them that when they've actually done a good job, he thinks they've done a bad job because they're being made to be in pain and they don't get to understand why it is that he does that. They don't know that he's celebrating. All they know is that their mouth hurts and that there's conflicting signals on their face that are uncomfortable. 
and more so than what this particular rider does because at this stage I think there's still time for him to see some of the backlash and decide not to do this anymore because he's definitely capable of not doing it it's not like he does it on every run I watched a bunch of his runs before doing this video and he doesn't do it every time so he's capable of not doing this and still putting in good rides he does this simply when he thinks he's done a phenomenal job as a means of celebrating so it means that it would not impact his job at all to just not do this or even still he could do the exact same type of celebration but he could just not use his horse's mouth for balance while doing it you can let the reins slip through your hands five star event riders do it all the time when they get a bad distance to a jump or have their reins a little too short as they're going over and they just let the reins slide through their horses through their hands so that they don't have to check the horse in the mouth so the big problem with this is the fact that people are defending this behavior even though it's something that is very easy for him to change so that it doesn't negatively impact his horse so more so than even him, it's the general attitude in the industry that is brought about when there's issues like this. The fact that there's so many people in the horse industry who think that it's their right to cause their horses discomfort when it is completely avoidable and solely for the interests of the human, in this case, where they're just celebrating. It's not even saying that he shouldn't use the horse for roping. It's saying that he just shouldn't celebrate in that way because it's unfair to the horse. But apparently that is still too far for a lot of these people. They feel so righteous in treating horses how they do that any type of criticism of their behavior or people pointing out that they could handle themselves in a way that might be more kind to their horse, they fight back and they're trying to justify their right to just do whatever they want. Another justification I saw a lot was, well, it's his horse, he can do whatever he wants. And that stems from the idea that like a horse is a belonging, like a machine, not a living, breathing creature. It doesn't matter who owns an animal if it is being put into distress for absolutely no valid reason. And people are thinking that they're righteous in doing so because they have ownership of the animal. It doesn't matter who owns it. If you only care about the well-being of animals that you own, you have animals for the wrong reason, full stop. So since Junior Naguera has time to come forward and answer to some of the criticism he's received and changed, I don't want to go at him too hard because it is possible that he has no idea how this is impacting his horse. That aside, if he does have no idea but has been able to see all of these professional photos of his horse's expression and not be concerned about it, that also speaks for a level of that also speaks for a massive lack of understanding of equine behavior in the horse world and ignorance that we're perpetuating because there is no reason why photos like that shouldn't raise red flags to people and why we should just think that it's completely normal and okay. We need to start looking at the problems that are staring at the industry right in the face and showing that there's welfare concern in numerous industries across the horse world and start to alter how we respond to them because a lot of these issues require very, very little change on our part and even if that change is minorly uncomfortable it's a lot less discomfort than what we're fighting to apply to horses on a day-to-day -day basis across the industry the level of discomfort and unfairness that we expect horses to withstand without having any misbehavior is completely unjust when most horse people can't even seem to deal with the discomfort of having their beliefs criticized it's a situation where we really need to stop being little whiny piss babies and start to change how we handle criticisms of welfare because not everything revolves around us and if you find it aversive and uncomfortable just for someone to make you feel uncomfortable with the words they use, imagine how uncomfortable you would be if you were gagged and voiceless and having physical discomfort and pain applied to you on a regular basis without understanding why and having no one care enough to rectify it. So that's where horses are, and that's not even really an anthropomorphic thing to say. It's drawing an analogy towards how a human would feel in the same circumstances because it's undeniable that a lot of these practices cause horses mass levels of stress and discomfort. Like, it's been proven. We cannot deny it. And stress hormones and stress behaviors don't lie, but people are willing to lie to themselves to make them comfortable, and we've seen that on an extremely common basis. Another thing to consider is that everything with the horse aside, this particular rider is really, really lucky that he's not had a horse flip on him yet because it would probably kill him, especially with the angle that he's lying at when he's doing that backward sit back. He would get crushed if a horse went over on him because his face would be what would be hitting the ground first because he's lying back on their rump. And in leaning back and pulling on their mouths that harshly, especially when they have a harsher bit on, 
he's kind of asking for that reaction in the sense that he's doing the very things that would cause a horse to react that way because they're in pain. And again, it's something that's completely avoidable. I do not think under any circumstances that that man deserves something bad to happen to him because of that. But he's very, very lucky that his horses have been so resilient and stoic that they have not responded that way because it would be exceptionally dangerous for him, more so than even the horse. Flipping a horse over can obviously be dangerous for the horse. But with him, with his position on where he is on the horse's back during that move maneuver, it would be very, very dangerous for him. And that could end what would be a very promising career for him and what has been a very promising career anyways. So even for people who are fans of him, I don't understand why they would defend this stuff because it's putting him at risk. Defending this behavior and making him feel like he's within the right to be behaving that way despite how it makes his horses feel and the danger that it could put him in is enabling something that could really, really put his life and his career at risk. And... That shouldn't happen. If you really idolize someone, you should care about their safety and their well-being, along with the well-being of the animals that have allowed them to get to the point that they have in the horse world. So yeah, that's my rant about this situation. And I'm not at all insulting his talent as a roper, but I'm insulting an attitude that should be insulted because we do not have the right to cause animals discomfort solely for our own desires. And this is a situation where it is so easy to avoid. And if we have people defending this tooth and nail and choosing this as the hill to die on in defending... It speaks for how much other abuse is going to be normalized because this isn't even a situation where he'd have to change his livelihood or do anything different other than how he celebrates. So if people are so rigid and unwilling to even consider changing the things they do when there's basically nothing at stake and they would rather continue causing their animals discomfort and potential long-term damage to them so that they can do what they want, it speaks for how people are actually viewing their use of their horses and animals that they claim to love and view as partners. Because it should be a no-brainer to slightly alter your behavior to make the partner that has helped you win feel more comfortable and just do something different. And it's really that easy. And the attitudes defending this speak for how pervasive this issue is. There's way too many people in the horse world who view it as their right to treat their horses however they want, regardless of how it impacts the horse. And this is why stuff like this needs to be called out. They shouldn't be comfortable in having that view. You can't have that view without criticism and you shouldn't be able to because you are hurting another being with your decision. It's not something that solely impacts you, which is why other people get involved. And there's a lot of ways we can do better by our horses while still doing the same things that we like with them. But a lot of people are way too stubborn to change and they view the discomfort of them having to alter their behavior as too aversive to want to go through with it. Meanwhile, they're willing to put their horses through so much more on a daily basis and expect them to work through that pain and discomfort without any issues. It is a completely unfair power dynamic and it is so incredibly hypocritical and I truly cannot stand it. I'm not against rodeo completely, I'm not against roping completely, but I'm against attitudes like this where people don't think that they should even have to mild... I'm not against roping, I'm not against rodeo completely, and... I'm not against rodeo completely. I'm not against roping completely. I just think that the attitude that enables this type of behavior and consistently defends it is a huge problem. And it's seen across all industries. It's not specific to rodeo. But in this case, what I'm taking issue with is specific to rodeo in what this rider is doing. And if you find yourself defending him and you refuse to consider how this feels to the horse or you're going to lie to yourself and pretend that this is all fine and dandy and the horse doesn't care despite their behavior screaming that that is not the case then I want you to realize that you're in denial and it's at the expense of the animals that you claim to love. And eventually when the sport ends up getting so criticized that it does get banned, you will be complicit in that ban because we could have avoided it if we actually had some self-reflection skills and started to alter the way we show up online in public and to our animals because it's avoidable. This is the type of stuff that makes people think that no one in the rodeo industry cares about their animals because they see the masses defending stuff like this when it is such an easy fix. It comes off as rampant selfishness and like they do not give a shit about their animals. And even though there's a lot of people in the industry who are not like that and who do care about their animals, when this is highlighted to the masses, it gives off that reputation. So if you don't want it to have that reputation, it's time to speak out because I am not kidding when I say that these apathetic attitudes that defend abuse 
resist and refuse any type of change, even when it would allow them to continue doing what they're doing with far less criticism. They're enabling what would be an eventual ban because they're highlighting to the world that their industry doesn't care about the animals in it. So anyways, thank you for listening. Don't forget to check out my other videos, like and subscribe, turn on post notifications. If you're interested in my training, I have some training tutorials on YouTube, but I have a full library full of training tutorials on my Patreon channel at patreon.com slash S-D-E-Q-U-U-S. You can find that out at the link in my bio, along with my product line and other things like this sweater. So there's dog hair on it because I have dogs.